Well, good morning, everybody. It's my privilege to lead your thoughts this morning and to help you as you seek to worship and serve our Heavenly Father. And while we're not able to join with him, we also remember our brothers and sisters who are at church at Phillip Island. At this very moment, they too are continuing in worship. May the Lord bless them, us today at this special time. Now for me, worshipping together with brothers and sisters at Phillip Island or anywhere in the world is a key stimulus to spiritual growth. Today I want to share my thoughts with you about what spiritual growth is. What is it? How does it happen? Why do we need it? We also need to remember that this is the fourth Sunday in Lent and Jesus died so that we could be forgiven and grow in spirit. For me, one of the key thoughts is that, that has stimulated my thinking and my faith is that our God has made us in his own image. We read this in Genesis chapter 1, 26. Let me remind you. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds in the air and the cattle and all the wild animals and every creeping thing that creeps upon earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. What does this mean? Do you look like God? For me, this means that our God wants us to have his own personality traits, beginning with love. But we have much more to learn. One way to respond to this is to think of our world as the kindergarten of eternity. For our life on earth is a time of preparation in which our Lord is growing us to be his family and to live with him forever. This is the reason for spiritual growth. Now there's a lot of imagery in the world of being a kindergarten. Did you suck your thumb as a toddler? Do you still do it now? Do you still have behaviour scars that you need to get rid of? We have all experienced physical growth, how to walk, how to jump, how to drive a car and many activities. We've experienced mental growth, to speak, to read, to do arithmetic, to learn other trades and different languages, to respond to the world around us and understand what's happening, to relate and converse with each other. What are the components of spiritual growth? I propose today that we think of spiritual growth as growing within us the personality traits of the family of God that we see in Jesus and which are encouraged or enabled by the Holy Spirit. So what are some of the personality traits of our God that we need to let him grow within us? Let me share some of my thoughts about what spiritual growth is. Here's a list of them. Faith, love, purity, holiness, wisdom, spiritual power, and there's some others as well, but these are the ones we're going to talk about today. Now, Jesus is the ultimate example of faith. Jesus knew that his life had a purpose to proclaim the love of the Father and to bring forgiveness to all who turn to him and the Father in faith. Our Lord has brought forgiveness to the whole world, to all who trust him and each one of us, one at a time. Have you ever wondered whether Jesus in his infinity when he was nailed to the cross knew the names of every person across the ages to whom he was bringing eternal life through his death? Jesus knew that he was sent by God to bring salvation to all of us, even, even each one of us here today. We need to believe this holy truth so we can trust him more and more and grow in faith and share this truth with others. There's many components of faith, including knowing the presence of our Lord and serving him so that we can bless God our Father. Have you ever thought about this before? Our God blesses us 
The infinite, infinite, holy God blesses us little dots of people on the southern side of a small planet. How can you and I bless God? I believe that the answer is to share our faith with others so that we serve in the things that we do and the ways we serve and we can help bring about the plans of God for people all around us. May our Lord grow your faith so you can worship him, serve him, bless him more and more in the things you do and may you know the blessings of the Lord today in, as we serve him together. Now the second quality of spiritual growth that I want to discuss briefly is love. I believe that love is the key quality of the personality of our God that drives us in his care for us and even the details of creation. Our God has placed us in this world, the kindergarten of eternity, so that he can grow us to be his family and then bring us into his presence, all who respond to his love and seek to him. Remember the words of Jesus that we read in Matthew chapter 22. Teacher, which commandment is the law is greatest? And he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We could add to the Lord's words to say, love is the key personality trait of our Father God. Some of you will remember me previous saying that the words, the words of Jesus, others second and your spilth last, spill joy. J-O-Y, Jesus, other, yourself. Loving Jesus first, others second and self bring deep inner joy and peace. Did you know that P-E-A-C-E, -E, peace, spells the presence of eternal God and Christ forever? May the Lord grow within you your love for God, our Father, and for those around you. This is a key part of spiritual growth that brings joy and peace. Now let's think about purity, which is another key part of spiritual growth. As a toddler, there were times when you fell in the mud and you got dirty in the ways that annoyed your mother and your father, but they washed you and dressed you in clean clothes. There have been many times when we have become spiritually dirty, but when we turn to the Lord and confess our sins, he washes us with the living water and makes us clean and pure. Can I express a little bit of my own eccentricity. Do you ever pray when you're having a shower? Dear Lord, I'm washing my body with clean water that's pouring of the tap above me. Please wash my heart with living water that gushes from your throne so that I can be clean and spiritually know your presence. I usually have a shower in the evening just before I go to bed and I find that to pray this prayer in the prayer shower gives me an inner peace that enables me to continue in prayer and worship as I lie in bed. Did you know that the body, your body, my body, is nearly 65% water? We need to drink water to be healthy, to wash our bodies to be clean. But there's a precious symbolism here that our spirits grow as the Lord pours his living water on us. He also feeds us with the living bread. And we are enabled to go spiritually by the living water that our body, Lord, pours on us and the living bread which he feeds us with. May the Lord wash your spirits daily and feed you so that you grow into spiritual maturity as a child of God. Now let's think about holiness. Holiness is a key quality of God. I believe that holiness can be defined as spiritual purity. It's a word we use to proclaim the presence of God. His holiness 
is infinite spiritual purity. I believe that God seeks to grace us with his presence so that you and I can become holy for us today as we worship the Lord and seek to serve him. He graces us with the presence of his Holy Spirit. I believe this is the way our Lord makes us holy and how he grows us to be like him, to be spiritually pure. Holiness is about living in the presence of an infinite holy God as he grows within us, within you, the traits of his own person. Holiness is the result of the presence of God as he grows us to be members of his family. Blessings to you as you are led by the Holy Spirit, as you seek to have your thoughts, your words, your actions and your life led by him as he grows within you the spiritual trait of holiness. Now let's think about wisdom. We have all been taught that our God is infinitely wise. We see his wisdom in the life of Jesus. Do you remember those words? Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. We read about wisdom in the records of holy men and the women in the Bible, but we can also see the Lord's wisdom in the world around us. Have you ever thought how God knew which planet to put us on? so that he could grow us to be like him and be members of his family. Gravity, energy, water, productive land meet our human needs. Our planet leans over 23 degrees, so sometimes it's summer and other times it's winter. We don't have the same weather all year. There are many wise things as a cre in creation. And as a young person, it was the structure of this world that fascinates me. Now it's the function of the world. Let me give you an example of the wisdom of God in creation. Just one example, because there's lots and lots of examples. Some of you will have heard me say this before. Did you know that there are some insects, when a female insect secretes a hormone called a pheromone, that reflects ultraviolet light? The male can see his girlfriend up to two kilometres away because she's giving him a light of ultraviolet light. But on the antennae of the male, the hairs are the same distance apart as the wavelength of light that he's getting from his girlfriend. So he can only see animals of his own species. This is, to me, is one of the wonders of creation created by our infinitely wise God. But I need to present you a sermon, not a lecture. And I need to encourage you to reach out to God and seek his wisdom. This is one of the qualities of spiritual growth. And how do we grow in spirit? By walking and talking with the Lord in our daily lives so he can lead us and grow his wisdom within us. And a key part of this is daily prayer and devotion in which we read many examples of wisdom that are recorded in the Bible. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is spiritual power. Our God is infinitely powerful, but as he grows us, we learn that a key feature of our God is spiritual power. For me, this is the power to resist all evil and to command the evil one to speak. Can I share with you another personal testimony? I have learned that when I have an evil or sinful thought, it's very helpful to pray, Go away, Satan, I am a servant of Jesus Christ, and I command you to leave me alone. Scram! And I speak these words firmly in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. When my mind prays like this, the evil thought disappears and I immediately hear the word within me, that's a good word, my son, remember that I am with you. Our God has infinite spiritual power and I believe he is growing us to be his family. Spiritual power is a result of spiritual growth that the Lord blesses us by his presence. How does he grow us? 
Jesus told us the Father gives us living water that gushes from his throne. Jesus is also the living bread. I believe these are symbolic of the text that the God is feeding our spirits to grow us. Peter in 1 Peter 2 verse 2 uses the phrase spiritual milk. Like newborn infants long for spiritual milk so that it, by it you may grow into salvation. These are the words of Peter. These words of Peter are a special reminder that we are spiritual infants who are living in the kindergarten of eternity. But our Lord is growing us to live with him. Can you imagine what it would be like to dine with the Lord? It would be much more than spiritual milk. <laughs> I will now want to discuss briefly the work of the Holy Spirit. For us today, the key means of spiritual growth is the work of spiritual, the Holy Spirit who is calling us, encouraging us, leading us, and when we required, he rebukes us. This is the growing power of our God that enfolds all of us. I want to remind you, because I've spoken about this before, that the Holy Spirit is leading us to have a walking and talking relationship with God. For me, spiritual growth leads prayer to be a two-way process. God speaks to us and we speak to God. Our God leads us in different ways to walk and talk with him and we're all different. Today I want to give a personal testimony of conversational prayer. Again, I've spoken about this briefly, but I want to share this again with you and encourage you in your own times of devotion as you walk and talk with the Lord. I had an unusual experience on a flight to London in the 1980s. The plane stopped in Bahrain en route from Singapore and I got out for a walk around. Every door in the airport had a man with a gun, but I felt very safe. And I wandered round a bookstore and I found a religious corner. On the top shelf there were Korans and Bibles. Yes, they were next to each other. On the next shelf there were books such as Introducing Westerners to Islam, Modern Pentecostal Christianity, and the Imitation of Christ by Thomas a. Kempis. I've heard about this book as the second most widely Christian book in the world after the Bible. So I bought a copy and I started reading it when I got on the plane. The book stood me up, or if you like, sat me down. And I finished it as we landed at Heathrow. Thomas a. Kempis was a Dutch canon who was born in 1380. And he lived in a monastery all his life, but he discovered and develop the concept of conversational prayer and the practice of putting words to the thoughts that the Lord has given us when we pray. Thomas Akempis called this Christ speaking in your heart. Let me give you an example from his um, book from about inner comfort. Thomas Akempis writes these words. I listen to what the Lord will say deeply in my heart. Blessed is the soul that listens to the Lord speaking within and then receives a word of comfort from him. And then Thomas put words to the thoughts that the Lord was giving him. And he writes them down as the words of Jesus. I am your salvation, your peace and your life. Live in me and you will find peace. Let go of all passing things and seek eternal ones. What are all passing things? but enticements that you lead away from me. And what good are created things if they cause you to be abandoned by the Creator? So let go of things and make yourself pleasing to your Creator so you may find true happiness. This is a conversation between Thomas Akempis and the Lord, which he recorded on paper so that we can read it today. I find it very helpful to record the, the words that the Lord gives me. If the President of the United States or our Prime Minister spoke to you, you'd remember exactly what they said. I want to remember what the Lord says to me. So how do I put to words the thought that the Lord is blessing us with so that our prayer time becomes conversational with the Lord? Let me give you another example. I read Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 and the words are, 
God called the light day and the darkness he called night and there was an evening and there was a morning the first day. Then I thought about this and then I put words to the ideas that were coming into my mind. Lord God, this comes to me as a reminder that the distinction between light and dark was and always be a priority to you. I invite you to remind me every time I forget this. Then after these words, new thoughts came to my mind and I sought to put them to my words, to write them down. My child, think for a moment how people think of light across the spectrum. You know light is the colours of the rainbow, plus ultraviolet and infrared. So it is with me. I shine with a wide spectrum of light into men and women to meet every need they have or ever will have, to brighten, to lead, to uncover, to burn, and the energy source is my nature, which is love. In my response to those thoughts, this is an awesome thought, dear Father, and I am led by your light today to lift my spirit to you in worship and in awe of you, my God of light. You and I are all very different, but may the Lord bless you as you worship the Lord in prayer and respond to the words of the Lord that he speaks to your spirit so that your spirit, your time of prayer becomes conversational. Now finally I want to address the question, what do we have to do to grow and when do we grow in spirit? Can I summarise this very, very briefly? We grow in spirit when we follow the example of Jesus, when we respond to the call of the Holy Spirit, when we read the words of God in the Bible and pray in response, and when we share our thoughts with each other, with our brothers and the love of God as we share with them. Our Lord Jesus is the ultimate example of spiritual growth. He was born as a little baby, but was grown by the Father to be God incarnate and to bring us to the Father. Spiritual growth begins with a commitment to the Lord our God and continues through our lives, even in our frail years. Our Father God resurrected Jesus and brought him to heaven to sit by his side as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. At the time of his choosing, our God will promote each one of us, each one of you, from this world which is the kindergarten of eternity, the great one which is heaven, and he will continue to grow us in his presence to be a family. We need to look forward to the day when we will stand before the Lord our God with a grown spirit. Our Lord has promised to give us a new body. This will include a new brain and a mature spirit that will continue to grow so we can live forever in praise and worship. Today, the Lord is working in and around us with the presence of the Holy Spirit who calls us, nudges us, encourages us, and when required, rebukes us. When you read the Bible, when you come to church, when you share your faith or care with another person, you are responding to the Holy Spirit within you who is growing the personality traits of Jesus and our Father God within you. The plan of our Heavenly Father is to be his family, expressing his own personality traits as we live with him forever. This requires and is his purpose of our spiritual growth, which the Holy Spirit is leading us, leading us. Blessings to each one of you today as you commit your lives to the Lord and as together we grow to be his holy family. This is the blessing of infinite love of our infinitely holy God and the holy process of spiritual God, spiritual growth. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow in you, before you in awe that you have made us all in your image and you are growing our spirits so that we follow you sincerely and expect to express the traits of your person. We thank you for these which include faith, love, purity, holiness, wisdom and spiritual power. 
Thank you for washing us with the living water, for feeding us with the living bread, and for gracing us with your presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the holy blessing of spiritual growth that is bringing us into your presence forever. Amen.